Hey everybody, welcome back to Freedom Malts. Germ here. Another First Impression Friday coming at you. Today we are going to look at the new version of Stranahan's Diamond Peak. And I say the new version because they used to put out Diamond Peak. Um, at that point in time, it was some of their oldest stocks blended together and bottled. And it was bottled at, used to be bottled at 47, yeah, 47%. Um, and they discontinued that. Now they came back out with the label for Diamond Peak, except it is their Cass Exploration series. This one was four years old in number three char, which is what they always do. And then it was finished in a Bushmills single malt cask. Uh, like I said, batch one, this is bottle number 3042. So they've had a few of them. Cool thing about Strand Hands, they give you a little gift with purchase. A two ounce shot glass. How neat is that? I really enjoy Strand Hands. Um, I know I typically say that I am a used cask fan uh, with American single malts. However, for whatever reason, whether it be Colorado, altitude, whatever, Stranahan's malt shines through that new number three char cask. It's delicious. Uh, they do a fantastic job, and they've been doing a fantastic job since 2004. So, really, they're up there in one of the older American single malt makers in the country here. So, uh, they've got it down pat. They make great stuff. So, color on it, it looks pretty normal for a Stranahan's. Nice color. It does have a classic strand of hands nose. Just a, a just a nice subtle malt character on the nose with some nice subtle barrel notes. The vanillas, caramels, that sort of thing. I do have to say, if um, <clears throat> if bourbon's your jam and trying an American single malt is something you want to do, Strand of Hands is probably the way I'm going to recommend you. Uh, you know, for the first American single malt, especially if you're a bourbon lover, it has just got so much familiarity of of bourbon uh, on the nose and on the palate that it just it would be a super easy transition or a super easy stepping stone. Uh, to get into bourbon. I think they do a fantastic job bridging the gap between single malt and um, bourbon. Not really picking up anything different here. Actually, if I had to, if I was blind, I would probably say this is their standard yellow label stuff. Maybe a slight Additional fruitiness that I don't typically pick up, but it would be very slight. Uh, I said the other Diamond Peak was bottled at 47. This one is bottled at 45. So still, you know, still above the floor. Pretty respectable. There is something magical about cast drink strain of hand. So if you can ever find a store that has a yellow label single barrel pick at cast drink, they are they are fun. Yeah, I'm not picking up anything <clears throat> anything really additional here. In in all honesty, um, it smells very very similar to the yellow label standard Colorado single malt from strain of hands. Like I said, a slight bit, a slight bit of fruitiness and kind of leaning towards that tropical fruit note, which that very possibly could be that Bushmill single, single malt cask influence there. Good Bushmill single malt is very tropical fruit. Uh, 
And again, that could be my mind playing tricks on me because I know it's a Bushmills cask. We don't know which Bushmills it is. It doesn't say. So without any uh, more delay here, let's get into the taste. Oh, wow. Okay. Off the, right up front, the initial, it was, felt somewhat thin and didn't offer up a lot of anything. Um, then right in the middle, it went, I did get some touches of some tropical fruits. Um, the finish on it is very similar to other strain of hands. Um, short to medium with a nice little oak tannin bite and just a touch of, of peppery spice. But it doesn't uh, it doesn't dominate anything. Fairly oily mouthfeel. Yeah, that, it is very nice and tropical fruity on that mid-palate. Which, that is untypical of Stranahan's. Mm. Slight sourness. Very slight. I'm not really picking up anything additional here. Add a little bit of water to it here, see what happens. See if we get any change. No change on the nose. No, not really. Not enough to talk about. Tropical fruits got a little bit, a little bit more pronounced. Almost juicy fruit gum, that yellow, yellow packaged juicy fruit gum. Almost, not quite. Finishes nice. A little bit of water actually makes it last a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, definitely... Uh, like I said in the beginning, if you're a bourbon fan, any strand of hands is is a great stepping stone into malt whiskey in general, American single malt specifically. Lots of similarities from what you're already used to drinking with slight different flavors. And you could definitely get an enjoyment out of it because of that. I really like Strand of Hands. I think they do fantastic things. They've been doing it for a long time. And um, this one isn't really any exception. It's not crazy different from anything else um, from them. Like I said, there's that slight addition of some, some minor tropical fruit notes. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but really... I think they should have kept the uh, the original style of Diamond Peak, and that's probably a biased personal opinion because I really did enjoy that original Diamond Peak. It was a fantastic whiskey. Um, not that this is a bad whiskey. This is a great whiskey, and that little tropical fruit note does add a, a, a nice little step in a different direction for what normally is there in Strain of Hands. So I would say, yeah, definitely if you see this one. Now, this is the first batch, and they have now since released the second batch, which was finished in a tequila cask. If you see it, definitely pick it up. It runs the same price as what the Diamond Peak used to run, about $79 or so. Uh, that is the MSRP on it, I think. So is it worth a pickup? Yeah, absolutely. It is. Um, 
especially if you already like strain of hands it would be definitely one to add to the uh to the collection thanks everybody and cheers to this american spirit